I have to say there were some elements of this conversation that I think are um, <laughs> at least above my head, maybe also above some uh, heads of the other people in the audience, because I think they are um, highly uh, technical and, and very much um, based on things like specific terminologies in the law. Um, so I had a little maybe detour question that maybe could be interesting to talk about. Um, and I think it's the, the relation to the economic system and especially this um, uh, desire to transform or to focus perhaps on one element within that system, um, for example, the identity or role or, or definition of the author, um, uh, leaving aside the, the rest of the uh, framework of capitalism intact. Um, I wanted to raise uh, maybe a text that many people have have, uh, have a familiarity with, uh, the um, author as producer by, by Walter Benjamin, um, where he says that um, there's a kind of obligation of the author when using the medium that he or she has uh, not to only kind of produce content for this medium to keep the wheels running. You could say it was a very, yeah, again, industrial notion, um, but to challenge um, the uh, medium itself as um, a kind of exploitative framework or p potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and in that sense, he tries to make a, dis oh, he says basically that intellectual creators, creative people, um, shouldn't, for example, only uh, talk about the struggles of the working class in the media, but consider themselves distinct from them nevertheless, because they are um, intellectual, for example. So he says that authors should look at themselves as producers, and therefore they should consider themselves part of um, a class struggle. And I was wondering how you guys think that relates to the present day when you could say the working class isn't necessarily what what that term means either in a term of work or in a kind of a hierarchy or in a term of um, a, a kind of a shared identity or ethos or, or political leaning. Um, and where do you guys see maybe the that that um, challenge by by Benjamin? Um, fitting within the present context? Um, first of all, I, I strongly believe in the idea of responsibility of, of, of artists, of every artist in a way, but I don't think um, we, we might be in a good, good situation um, of society or the state or the European Union um, defining what uh, might be responsible art. So it's up to the artist to act responsibly, um, which which um, 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 is attached to the, to the idea of of, um, of um, free arts and uh, artistic freedom and things like that. Um, second, um, people like uh, Benjamin uh, Benjamin uh, Adorno and others um, have been um, uh, in a in a have acted and written and thought in a manner that might not be completely applicable to our situation in a way, uh, but there there are aspects to it that are completely um, um, uh, um, actual. Uh, but but um, but always I, I I had always a problem with the elitist approach um, of of, um, uh, of of someone who isn't a worker but thinks he knows what's good for workers. So um, I, I'm a little, a little taken aback um, when talking about this this um, um, very approach, but um, obviously we are in a situation of of change, and this change is um, rapid. It's uh, it's it's aggressive. I mean, I mean, all those words like disruption or so um, are completely um, familiar with, with with for every with every one of us. So um, uh, we we are we are within a situation of of rapid change that's so much um, faster than the industrial industrial revolution was. So um, it might be interesting to 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 uh, watch um, those um, um, situations in a reference um, view and um, what happened in the industri industrial re uh, um, revolution. Um, associations and unions rose and uh, claimed uh, their right to have free time uh, and to be paid, 
and to be pay, to, to to be paid appropriately. And right now, uh, the European artists um, 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 fight to be paid appropriately by a neo neo feudalist uh, systems. Yeah, who who um, um, who, who got um, the, the 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 bizarre backing of people who are against capitalism? I mean, what what a crazy situation! And um, so um, this is why I, I said we should be aware of who our enemies are. Um, and it's not, uh, yeah, it's enough. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll continue from, from the, the last sentence. I, I, I totally agree with you. I think the, uh, the, the real issue is to understand um, the stakeholders and the enemies. And both are important. Um, and, and I'm saying that because we, um, this question of the artist as an as intellectual worker, I think this is something which you see uh, in, in the tradition of collecting societies. And, and by the way, GEMA is a very good example of a society that actually is uh, structured in such a way, it is governed in such a way, so that it actually tries to support the rights of its members, of the artists. And traditionally, it's like a union with a specific legal status. And uh, going back to my first comments, I think this is, this is something which we need to replicate. And that's what the, uh, um, I think we are awfully pro-European, but anyway, the, uh, that's what the directive, the, the Collecting Societies Directive tried to do. It tried to replicate some of the best practices mm. across Europe, precisely because that wasn't the case in all member states. And if you see that is, is basically a failure of uh, that you see uh, in all cases where you don't have a well-governed system. It, whenever you have a system which is not transparent, that's a failure, and and that's what it tried to do. The copy, the direct, the collecting societies directive. Uh, so I, I, in itself, I think there is um, an understanding of the artist, especially the continental artist, as an intellectual worker, and that's why she unionizes. And that's very different. You're right. We should have said that. That's why it's so different to talk about copyright and author's rights. The reason why we talk about it as if it's the same is because, unfortunately, the barriers um, that um, exist in, in terms of the law, they're not enforced. and They bypass by contracts, which do this almost automated transfer of rights from the author to the rights holder. And, and they alienate the author from the product of your work. Um, collecting societies try to stop that. Unfortunately, they've been put in the same basket as record labels or tech companies, which is on the exact opposite side. And, and that's a problem we have. Um, and I, I say we have, because I'm, whatever, whatever hat we, I wear as an intellectual worker, as someone that supports a public interest organization, uh, as an activist, I see a problem with that. Um, what happened with the uh, uh, what happens? Uh, so the first thing, so the to, the first part of the answer is the intellect, the the uh, the creator, the artist, in, especially in the continent, has always perceived herself as an intellectual worker, irrespectively of of, of any other uh, understandings of authorship, because of the way institutionally it has been unionized. The collecting society served particularly that specific purpose. The second thing is what we're facing now. What we're facing now is what you call the neo-feudalism, um, uh, which is what happens with platforms, because they are, by definition, extractive. What they want to do is to minimize the cost of the labor that is invested and actually extract, add, uh, they have actual labor, affectionate labor, which is extracted by a platform. When I exchange content with you over Facebook, uh, Facebook is not paying anything for the content and at the same time is extracting both my actual labor, which is the intellectual property rights, which are not paid for, and my affectionate labor, which is expressed in personal data. The affectionate labor normally is expressed in personal data. I have a relationship with my girlfriend, I, I sent her something which is very personal. This something is monetized through my interactions in, on, on, on a piece of network. So that's why the legislation that we see in Europe, and again, I, I sound awfully pro-European, but <laughs> it's true. The legislation we have right now is quite progressive in the sense that it tries to actually accommodate these things. In a sense, like being old Europe, we're old fashioned and we consider these rights still as important. That's why we passed the legislation of GDPR. That's why we still respect moral rights. That's why we're trying to have a decent legislation about collecting societies. Now, the problem with that is that um, it's very difficult for the end user, which is used to operate in an environment of low transaction cost, which is basically, it means instant gratification. 
I want to see a movie, I search it, I find it, I have it. So these, this end user, this end, end user, uh, who's basically then through this interaction is being exploited, is being extracted, is used to this uh, instant gratification and objects to anything that is contrary to that. As a result, it becomes an ally of, the, um, of its uh, exploiter. Uh, which is the platform. And that's why we, we see this, this very uh, crazy uh, situation where we have on the same camp uh, people that are supposed to support uh, free culture uh, with, and I'm, I'm considering myself as one of them, and, um, and, and, and big tech. Um, and, and it's a question that has to do with what exactly is it that we are supporting? Let's try to be a bit more precise. And if you see how the debate technically has devolved, developed is in the framework of the cooperative. So we are not opposing to the existence of big tech or platforms because we, it's, we, it's, there's no way that Gini goes back in the bottle. We, we're used to that. But we want a governance structure which actually shares the wealth. It doesn't make the wealth only extractive towards one direction, which is outside this continent. I sound now protect protectionist, but it's true. It's outside this continent. It doesn't return to the taxpayer. It doesn't return to jobs. And I, we sound awfully old-fashioned, uh, all of the people that we talk about that. But we, uh, it's not sexy to talk about. It's much sexier if you're Google or if you're Facebook. But it's true. It's true that the jobs are extracted, money is extracted. We need to fight the right battle, which is not, in my, in my opinion, is not necessarily within the realms of copyright. It's about competition law, it's about corporate governance, it's about personal data, it's about taxes, it's about um, uh, health and safety in, in other regimes outside uh, what we do. I'm, I'm frightened to ask another question uh, because I think it might take up the rest of the break. I, I want to ask a, a okay. question, so, which is, why do you think we, we fail so badly in, in actually uh, making this point to, to of, of uh, what happens in European legislation, yeah. which is good uh, uh, to, to the European public? Why, why is it such? Is it part of the general European, let's say, communication failure, or is it something else we're doing? It's a big question. Really, um, um, because you, you could open several perspectives um, on it and uh, you, you, you might come to different um, um, uh, answers. Um, if we look um, at um, Big Tech itself, they started in the early 90s um, to, to spread narratives, um, the narrative of free. Um, and uh, uh, it's 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 a kind of professional framing um, th they did, and it's it's uh, it's documented. You you find uh, texts about that. Um, who gave the money, and and it, which, which institutions uh, uh, came up? And we have we have a situation that um, um, about more d uh, about two decades long uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, as in the uh, European Union. Um, Big tech funded NGOs um, um, oppose every idea, every concept of regulation um, as being anti free, anti, um, 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 yeah, yeah, as being a means of, uh, of censorship. Um, and uh, at the same time, people buy things like that and uh, giving. Everything they have to one of, of those companies, um, every intimate detail of your life and, and of, of your, of your um, mental state, um, Facebook knows earlier than you do if you have a problem um, uh, in terms of, of uh, psychological, uh, psych psychological crisis or something like that. And um, so, um, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's one more of those bizarre um, 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 constraints or, or, um, or lines we have um, historically because um, we, we talk about freedom but we give away our freedom to, to companies at the same time and, and at the same time we do have a, a legal system in continental Europe um, that, that is focused on the idea of human dignity which means that the state might be able to, to protect you um, um, from, from yourself, where, uh, whereas uh, at the same time we have an a, 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 a Anglo-American system that is more uh, on the on li libertarian uh, side, uh, which means um, uh, 
the the, the individual uh, in the individual needs to be protected from the state. Mm. So uh, we have uh, a transfer of of um, of narratives, um, of ideas, of concepts that aren't uh, comparable. That aren't uh, you, you can't you can't seriously co um, um, confuse those systems and um, 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 creative commons and uh, fair use are, are, are problems in that field of of, of, um, of work because they they don't cope with uh, with the, the, this um, idea of moral rights we have in Europe. And um, with the exclusivity, and uh, so uh, um, uh, yes, to me that sorry. <laughs> it, 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 uh, and um, at the same time, at the same time, we, we we do have a situation, as I said before, that that is driven by fear. Um, uh, uh, governance of of, shit, of shitstorm is a, is a big fear in politics right now, and um, I've been talking to quite a few. Uh, people from the parliaments and from the from the offices, and um, they are completely aware of the fact that if they um, uh, show any uh, sign of um, um, sympathy for um, the content mafia, um, uh, it will cost them the next vote. All right, I think we <laughs> take a little break. Oh, sorry. in what you're talking about and thinking that uh, we are in a collective uh, civil disobedience is like uh, what you're pointing out of the extractiveness of these platforms. Uh, maybe you should look at uh, a sex workers collective uh, which is based in uh, Bologna, which is actually saying like all our activities on Grindr and all these platforms, like we need uh, to unionize mm -hmm. and we need to get uh, paid for sharing that. So maybe one of your allies is not in the music composer uh, industry, <laughs> but in the uh, sex work uh, industry. But uh, th this is totally right. Is not this is not a discussion. I think it's a discussion that has to be framed uh, in the broader context yeah. of uh, exploitation. You're totally, totally right. That's why I think there is a lot of discussion about how you create cooperatives which actually can allow people to unionize or reduce the negatives of extraction. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's also uh, a very uh, much a debate about what are the values that we want to support uh, in Europe in terms of regulation and, and how can these values, uh, these values with big V, actually um, produce value with small V for the individuals and the collectives. Thank you.